The end of the school year is upon us, and many local high schools are gearing up for their end of the year celebrations. New 7's Nick Fish has more on upcoming graduation plans around the NEK. Both graduations and end of school year celebrations, including proms, will be permitted. Many local high schools are starting to announce their 2021 graduation plans. Linden Institute plans to hold their graduation on the football field on June 6. Linden Institute says each graduate will be given four tickets and seating will be grouped by individual families. St. John's Bay Academy's graduation yeah, will be back. held on the football field on Monday, June 7th. A detailed schedule for the event is yet to come out from St. Johnsbury. Danville plans to have their graduation the following weekend on June 12th. This is an exciting time for many high school <laughs> graduates, especially after it such a challenging school year. You get to come together as a class and celebrate and have uh, at least some members of their family there to see them graduate. It's, it's, it's huge. High school graduation guidelines will follow the Vermont Forward Plan. Starting June 1st, indoor events can have one unvaccinated person per 50 square feet, up to 300 people, and any number of vaccinated people. Outdoor events limited to 900 unvaccinated people and any number of fully vaccinated people. These celebrations are not only being permitted this year, but also being strongly encouraged. This has been a long year for our students in our schools, and we want to do whatever we can to ensure the school year ends in a safe and celebratory way. But we're trying to find a path forward so that they can have um, a somewhat normal graduation. Schools will likely ask attendees about their vaccination status prior to the event so they can determine capacity. In addition, masks are allowed to be taken off when given speeches and accepting diplomas under the guidelines. Schools will likely be announcing official graduation schedules in the coming weeks. Nick Fish, News 7. Increasing COVID infections, more vaccinations, and rapidly changing safety guidance has led to some confusion over whether out-of-state students attending Vermont colleges are eligible for vaccine clinics in Vermont. News 7's Nick Fish has more. At this point, the Scott administration says any out-of-state college student, 16 and older, who is planning to stay in Vermont for the summer can register for a vaccine on April 19th. Students planning to head home at the end of the semester are not eligible. But at this point in time, we want to make sure we take care of Vermonters first, and uh, as other states have done as well, and, we'll, uh, and then we'll move on to the next phase if possible. If the vaccine rollout goes well and supplies are available, Governor Scott's administration says they might be able to open up registration for out-of-state students on April 30th before they return home for the summer. Vermont's Health Commissioner says discussions are underway to determine the best way to get vaccines to students. We have talked actively with all of the campuses around the state, uh, partnering with them to make sure the vaccine could get to them, uh, as opposed to making the students drive to some site uh, where they might not even have cars to, to be able to drive to. MVU out-of-state students older than 16 with pre-existing health conditions or are black, indigenous, or people of color were told they can register for a vaccine using their on-campus address. However, the rest of out-of-state students will have to wait. The, the, the state is, um, um, will uh, vaccinate any college student 16 and older with a high-risk condition, and that includes out-of-state, um, and then they will also vaccinate any BIPOC student, um, even if they're out of state. But certainly we wish that the decision was different. We want to be able to vaccinate all of our students right now. Uh, we think that's the best thing for the state um, and the best thing that the state can do for those students. Further adjustments to Vermont's vaccine rollout plan could appear tomorrow as Governor Scott holds his regular Friday briefing. Nick Fish, News 7. One local middle school is facing a new future. The Kingdom East School Board proposed a plan to divide up the Gilman School with other schools in the district. This plan proposes to move the 5th grade class at Gilman to Lunenburg, along with the 6th, 7th and 8th grade classes to Concord. Gilman School has faced many building issues after water, mold and lead was discovered in late 2019. Since January, $169,000 has gone into the building to make it fit for public use. The estimated 20-year cost to maintain the Gilman School as it stands would additionally cost over $3 million. Without the merge, Gilman faces $175,000 of immediate facilities. Lunenburg faces its own building challenges, and with the merge, they would need an additional classroom space for the fifth grade. Total expenses at the Lunenburg School alone would cost $520,000.
the sixth, fifth, and eighth grade, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade merge would be a much simpler move as classroom space is already available at Concord. Um, don't look at it as somebody that's sitting in London Bell or Burr or Wheelock or Sheffield or Sutton or Newark or Concord. Look at it through the lens of Bloomberg. If it was up to this community, this would be overwhelmingly rejected. I'm just asking you as a board when you're discussing this, look at it through the lens of Bloomberg and listen to the people of Bloomberg when you're making this decision. The Kingdom East School District says this merge will provide more opportunities for students. If the merge happens, the Gilman School will be renovated to provide pre-K and early childhood education, along with a community event space. The board is taking public comments until they vote on a final decision in May. Remote learning and instruction is t testing teachers' ability to keep students engaged and keeping track of their pupils. Tactics for continued engagement, including reaching out to parents if a child is falling behind or if a teacher doesn't hear from a child for a while. Schools may also do an at-home check to see if they can help the child deal with online learning. Teachers are being creative. They're, they're finding any ways that they can to individually meet the needs of their students. Um, you know, if, we're, if we see that our students are not um, showing up, if we're unable to, to get in touch with them, we have people that are going to their homes and knocking on doors. You know, we're, we're literally doing anything that we can to try to engage our students and our families during this time because we don't want to lose touch with any one of them. Area schools are hoping to bring more students back for in-person learning as teachers are vaccinated and new three-foot distancing rules are put in place. Federal COVID relief money is on the way to help make that happen. $81 billion for K through, 8th, through 12th grade education across the country to help cover COVID expenses and pay for the reopening process. This money is coming through a program called Elementary Secondary Emergency Relief, or ESSER. This will be the third installment Vermont has received from ESSER since the pandemic began. Vermont received $31 million last spring, another $127 million in December, and now $285 million will be coming back to be dispersed to K through 12th grade schools. You know, it's something I think districts, uh, on the one hand, uh, it's going to be exceedingly useful to address uh, expenses related to COVID, and particularly uh, as we anticipate, again, we've been open all along, so the, the costs for us aren't really about opening our schools. It's about what are we doing in the next phase of our response, which we call recovery phase. You know, how are we going to help students who've been negatively impacted? Secretary French hopes schools will use this money on COVID expenses and COVID relief, then shift existing funds to improving the health and safety of school facilities. Wheelock will ask on Tuesday to approve a major upgrade for the town hall and town garage. The Wheelock Select Board is asking voters for $30,000 to be added to the $16,000 town hall project. This would go towards fixing accessibility problems at the town hall, which was part of the 2019 settlement with the U.S. Justice Department. The town made temporary improvements to comply, but long-term renovations still need to be made. The select, the select board would like another $16,500 to be added to the $83,000 town garage reserve fund. The money will either be used to repair the garage leaking roof or go towards a new proposed building, a new garage, and new town hall. I think we're wise to consider the projects as interconnected because we do have that large parcel of land where the town hall sits and there's room there, we believe, for a new garage to be placed. Once, you know, once we get through this planning period, we have to move forward with the garage because it, it is a total embarrassment and it's, we're lucky to have our road crew be willing to work in such adverse conditions. With approval, the select board then must decide whether to fix the old garage or move forward with town hall and garage replacement ideas. Wheelock residents cast their ballots today on town meeting day, but this year's meeting was different than years past. Wheelock voters are deciding issues such as bridge repair, town hall upgrades, and town garage revitalization. Wheelock held its pre-town meeting day information session on the web on Monday, February 22nd, and are voted today by Australian ballot. Thanks. Um, but the transition um, has been has been difficult a little bit only in that I'm a new town clerk. So, you know, everything that I do I, is just is new to me anyways. I think the biggest and the hardest thing was getting the word out to the townspeople about the change. Polls in Wheelock opened at 10 and will close at 7. The town of Wheelock had 115 total residents cast their ballots on Tuesday, including 50 absentee ballots that were sent in. 
The town of Wheelock voted on issues such as road and bridge repair, town hall upgrades, and town garage revitalization. All the articles that were voted on by the town passed, including $30,000 going to the town hall and $31,000 going to the town of Wheelock Sheffield Fire Department for equipment replacement and upkeep. All candidates running for re-election were voted for, including a new select board member, Jim Blackbird. The Vermont Principals Association says all winter high school sports will have some form of playoff season. Due to COVID limiting the numbers of games, it will be an open playoff season where all teams are eligible to compete no matter how many games a team has played. The regular season is expected to end on March 13th. The playoffs will start the following week and the last until the end of March. But we were up front in the fall and we said the same thing for the winter that we're going to have an open tournament. So regardless as to how many games you play, you will be eligible to participate in the tournament. Now we're expecting if we start, you know, tomorrow night and we go through until March 13th, uh, we're probably going to have anywhere from an eight to 10 game season in hockey and in basketball. That's fine. The VPA is still working on locations to hold the playoff tournament for both basketball and hockey. UVM will not be a location for this year's Division I basketball final or hockey championships. A fast charger may be coming to a town near you. Governor Phil Scott announced today they are bringing 11 new plug-in electronic vehicle charging stations to the state over the next two years. As part of the Blink Network, a new fast charging station will be coming to St. Johnsbury on Railroad Street, located at the St. Johnsbury Welcome Center across from Anthony's Diner. These charging stations will be utilized three parking spaces at the southern end of the lot and will have the charging capability to charge an electric vehicle up to 230 miles in just 30 minutes. When these new stations are complete, it will allow Vermonters to have access to a fast charging station anywhere in the state within 30 miles. The state of Vermont is also working on bringing six more highway corridor fast charging stations at strategic locations across the state.